What's up guys, Nightingale here and welcome to another Intermediate Traveler Guide video. Today we are sitting here in the Plot Hunter Guild Hall. What I want to talk to you guys today about is understanding Guild Wars. For a lot of you newer players, this is something to, that you're kind of hesitant on. And understandable, because you know you've been told to not focus in on PvP. And that's great. It's cool. What we're wanting to talk here is understanding the Guild War, what are you after, how to go about it, setting up a defense, how to scout for targets, and also how kind of BS the system can be. And I've got the perfect scenario for you today. So let's jump into it. So we're in the Guild Hall. The first place you'll go is Battlefield Guild War. Now, we are at right now at war with War Waifu. Why, why is this significant? Do you see the the badge behind theirs and the the, the plebiness of the badge not the, the the icon not behind ours? This signifies that they are a top 100 guild, and not just a top 100 guild. If we come down here to frames and you click on this frame, in the Endeavor season they were rewarded to those who placed in the 31st to the 100th. Do I look like I'm a top 100 player? No. That's right. I'm not. So, this is showing you how absolutely BS the system can be. Smilegate, if you happen to watch this video, fix your darn game. We should never be fighting a top 100 guild. Our record isn't even close to touching a top 100 guild. Our, our combined combat class is probably a third of their this is stupid. Okay, rant aside, I had to get that out there, let a little steam off. This is BS. And here's the thing: this is happening. In, this doesn't. This is happening all over. It's not just my guild. It's other people's guilds. It's the system doesn't match very well. And to anybody new, this happens. I have thicker plot and thick plot both showing opposite ends of the coin. We have one where they're going to do really well on and another one that they've kind of struggling on. So don't worry about it in that aspect and just go in and just try to do your best. That's all that's ever asked of you by most guilds. In my guilds, that's what I ask for. Try to do your best. So where I want to start with first in this is understanding how to set up a defense. So we're going to come to my tower, which is surprisingly still standing right now and we're going to talk about how i set up my defense my logic behind it and you you'll you'll see that there's actually a lot less science to this than there than it may seem with general purgus i was like i started in here on team one and i was like okay i guess we're going to try to catch him off guard i happen to have a faster than normal rb for where we're at and i was like okay the thought is to prevent being carroted, I hate that that's an adjective, am I really using that right, carroted? To prevent being destroyed by carrot, there we go, There's there, there we go. I was thinking, okay, they're probably going to try to come in and cleave, which is going to potentially, or somebody's going to use an Arby, they've got a 1 in 3 chance of hitting uh, General Purgus, so let's raise our odds that you're going to push Cigarette forward. She's basically here to just be anti-carrot or anti-red unit. Arby is here to just do Arby things and also to just check to see, you know, to catch them off guard because they're not going to expect an Arby to come in your face just instantly and S3 you. And GP's here to tank. As far as bottom team, it was just, how annoying can I get it with what I had? Fighter Maya, this this team typically is the team that loses. If I'm going to win a fight, it's my upper team. My, my defense right now is based off of some of my better built characters. And that's kind of the goal of this, is to say... Sometimes you just have to use your better built characters no matter what. The logic though for the bottom is Fighter Maya is super tanky. She can crack away at light and dark units. That's kind of why she's there. Also to be a super bulky unit that um, Spectre Tenebria can build her passive up on or try to be the, the threat for the longest time possible. Alencia is here for stripping away buffs because... Typically, there are carrots involved. There are um, FCCs I've been attacked to. Uh, today, we were destroyed by um, Cerise, Balin Cezanne, and Spaz. 
yeah. So I'm going to take a wild guess here. This was the faster unit. Absolutely deleted RB. And then she just did Spectre Denebria things and killed both of these. Probably killed Sigurd and did that. Or Kali could have been faster. Here, I definitely know. Not, not a single one of these units was over 200 speed. So I'm sure he beat me by 250. Or he beat me by... Uh, he probably hit 280, 290 with that. So, I mean, he probably lapped me before I even took a turn. And this just died very, very quickly. Uh, as far as extinction here... I don't even know why he would have brought that. Other than just to have a, some sort of something to maybe kill um, Fighter Maya. But, great team. Blew through me probably like a hot knife through butter. Because his gear quality is 100 times better than mine. And this is BS that, I'm, that there are people fighting me like at that gear quality. So I really think that the devs, again, need to work on fixing their mechanics on how they search for fights, which would be a lot better. But I do have some defenses. We fought a team where I actually was winning, and typically it was my RB that came through and won. It was very rare they killed RB. So, yeah, you can see we won some, we lost some, and we, we lose them. I mean, it happens. Is this the best defense team? Absolutely not. Do I have the units built up to really make a great defense team? Absolutely not. Why? Because PvP is not my focus right now. While I am working on Guild War units, it's also just to have some units that have quality that I can go out and either have fun with a little bit, defend, or to attack certain fights. That's really it. I'm not out here yet trying to build up my gear quality and units for pvp yet my my path is expeditions once i get to the expeditions and i'm able to do expeditions very well then we'll start working towards the gear quality to make guild wars because that's really going to be my focus of the game is guild wars i think it's a great system when we're not getting matched up against crap like this and i i enjoy this type of fight take what you have and make the best of it that's that's really the moral of the story for defenses now let's talk about the aspect of scouting, how to pick your fights, and what are you looking for. So, I'm going to use the example, obviously I've taken my fights for the day, so I can't go actually fight a unit. But I will walk you through the process of what I go through in my head and try to help you figure out how to pick a fight that's better for you. Most of you right now are fighting with Wyvern teams, and that's perfectly okay. You, you've got your Moonlight connection, so it's either Spectre Tenebria, or Arbiter Vildred. You've probably got a decently built Angelica because Wyvern Tank or Mont Morancy. And then depending on what your luck's been with five star tickets, you'll probably have a small little cache of something else to use. But for the most part, you've probably got a heavy set built of blue units, which is fine for carrot meta. Now, we're going to jump in. I took just... I, I literally just said, screw it, and I went in on this. I drew two fights and lost one. I really didn't care. When looking for fights, the best thing to say is take your time, walk through all of the towers, check them out, and see what they are. Take a mental note. Write it down. Do something to help make a note of, I could fight this. Know your units, know your type advantages, know your type disadvantages. That seems pretty easy, right? So if we jump in and look at this one, what am I looking at? So I'm looking at round one and round two fight. I see Falcon of Clary, Cerise, and Arbiter Vildred. <clears throat> we look at round two, we see Troublemaker Crozet, Ravi, and Landy. Now, let's reverse think this, and what are they trying to do? Falcon of Clary is going to be able to provoke. She's probably fast. She's probably going to be able to cycle heal. Cerise is probably fast. She's probably the lead-off unit here, so you're gonna your speed check is Cerise. It's not. It may not be. It, you might actually have both, depending on how they're built. But chances are, Cerise is probably the speed check here. Maybe it's Falcon or Clary, depending on how long they've been playing. And then you have Arbiter Vildred here, who can potentially be on a, one of several different builds. But more likely, it's either Speed Arby or it's Degen Arby. No clue here. I never attacked it. I didn't went into it, and I haven't asked uh, what ended up being the case with this Arby. Now we're looking at this, the round two. We see Troublemaker Crozet. We see Ravi and Landy. Well, we can probably say that Troublemaker Crozet is probably on Adamant Shield, maybe on Arius. 
Ravi is probably Sigurd Scythe on counter or on lifesteal or counter. More likely it's lifesteal or actually no, in this case, most of them at this level are probably um, counter set Ravi's. More than likely. Uh, Landy is a lot of damage. This could be counter Landy. This could be big, big, big DPS Landy. Probably on Guiding Light. The mentality here is most likely that's on Guiding Light. Maybe he has two Guiding Lights, but he has Cerise up there. So there's a chance that there's a couple Guiding Lights around here. What's Guiding Light? It's the ability to basically go invisible. It's really annoying. So if we're to attack this, what are we going to be looking at? We need a Speed Contester. We're going to need something either elemental disadvantage or elemental advantage to cerise so we need to bring at least grass because if we go um we can go blue but then falconer clurry has advantage not that she does a lot of damage but you'll probably want to look at something green or completely neutral and go moonlight now this is where it gets a little tricky for new players you don't have a lot of moonlight units so this gets a lot harder for you to think about and this is probably a bad one to pick on, but I just wanted to come in here to kind of walk you through a process. Arbiter Vildred, you're going to have to kill twice unless you have an extinction unit. So, good luck. It's Sigrid is a great shot here. If you can, as long as it's not a super, super damaging Arby, you might be able to get your Sigrid around on it to get it low enough to get its extinction down. Depending on how it's built. I've gone into some that I hit that are a brick wall, and some of them pop super, super easy. It just depends on what's going on here. Now we move down to round two. If you happen to have LQC, you've got you a um, dark target bomb, but chances are he's tanky. And he's got a whole anti-crit system typically built into his kit. Good luck trying to get through him. You have the very, 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 probably the scariest thing here is the Ravi. Even with full blue units, I lost a Ravi fight. They're, they're disgusting. Landy, well, you would probably want to bring something like Carrot and hopefully be able to kill both um, Ravi and um, Landy with Carrot. You have many options out there. Maybe even go Ravi versus Ravi. I've seen those fights. With my kit, I would probably be trying to bring LQC, maybe Lilius, because I'm going to try to sit here and tank it as long as possible. And with my current builds, I would probably take either, if I didn't use Vivian up top, I'd use Vivian down here because I'm going to try to AoE. Um, that's giving me an attack buff, which is bad for Landy, but I don't care if I can kill Landy in one shot. It doesn't bother me. That's how I would approach this. But... What I do is I walk through and I check everything. We see what's in all these fights and we work through our way through all three towers. Now, typically with our Guild Wars, we never get to the Stronghold. It's very, very rare we get to Stronghold just because we don't have everybody taking their fights. Everybody can't win their fights. And just overall in general, our quality isn't there yet. Now, I expect by the end of the day, our stronghold's going to be beat. This is a top 100 guild. It is stupid that we're fighting this. I'm expecting a complete 9, 10,000 loss like we had with, um, what was it, Mango Nation or something like that. Um, we fought so stupid. Um, war ranking. Yeah, War Log. Mango Town, 9,100. Why are we fighting these guys? Like... They, they stomped us to literally oblivion and back. So go through, check your fights. Now, the next thing I want to cover is, especially for new players, this is huge. A lot of you feel like you're not good enough to attack. You're not good enough. You don't want to be in war. You don't understand what you're here for. This is what I want to say is it's okay to lose all your fights in the beginning. And here's why. Coming in, losing a fight completely outright, just quick three losses and out, is more beneficial than your, to your account than not attacking at all. For a couple things. You don't get the experience of at least seeing what's going on. You don't get the experience of trying to figure out how to beat these fights, because you'd be shocked, especially if you get fights that are around your kind of 
guild range, your kind of player range, your specific fight, like your general range, you might actually be shocked to see that you might win some fights just because you have the unit advantage. Or you might have a slightly better build. You might have, there are some slights that might be in there, but you don't know if you don't try. And then the most important thing is, no matter what, by losing, you're guaranteeing that you're earning armbands every fight. And I've talked about this in the beginner's guide about joining a guild, that armbands are important, and that's why you want to be fighting, and that's the real thing is, as a newer player to the game, armbands are very, very, very vital to you. That's why you want to, it's okay to lose. And this way you at least get some experience, you can come in, take a look, see if it's okay. Maybe you win, maybe you gain more armbands. Maybe you don't, and that's okay. Find where your progression's at. As a new player, just go in and drop three star fodder on them and lose if you know you can't beat it. If they're all level 70s and you're just sitting here as a mere level 40 or level 20, just lose your fights, it's okay. We would much rather see you lose a fight Show the attempt of joining, of try, uh, go into a fight just saying, I'm willing to participate just by losing. That you're earning armbands to come to the member shop and you start buying things like Symbol of Unity and Proof of Valor. Things that are actually going to make your account better by earning armbands. And I can't stress this enough. Here I am, I'm saving up a lot of armbands. I think I need over 4,000 to buy a full limit break on Proof of Valor. Why am I not spending it is in case something comes up that they change something and I'm like, okay, I really need this because they just recently added Warhorn. So there's a decent chance that they, it's, before I get this, they may add something else. They may do a guild update. I'm not going to buy anything else. I'm not to the point where I can buy the transmit stones. I still have artifacts to max out. I'm at least going to max out one Warhorn, one flag, one proof of valor before I start buying the gold transmit stone a month. Because I can, I'm sure I can earn this in a month easily, but I would rather invest my resources somewhere else. Just like there are other things in here. Once I get past this step of the game, then I can start investing into other aspects. So earn your armbands, start working on them early, and it will really, really, really help you out in the beginning. Thick Plot and Thicker Plot have started doing this, and that's one thing they're really promoting out a lot is just attack, and it's okay. And they're making bounds of progress, and I'm really, really proud of them. You know, Plot Hunter started out in the same aspect. We're developing a little bit further, and that's why I've gotten, I've got these guilds set up to where you can grow in them, and not have to worry about the the restraints of going up against stronger guilds. Sure, it'll help, but I also think in the mentality of by everybody being around the same player base, they all or the, the same gear base, they're all going to grow at roughly the same rate. We have several different growth rates inside of Plot Hunter, and it's I think it's better that w some of us are catching up and some of us are pushing away just based on the progression of the game and how long they've been playing. But some of us that are truly dedicated will be able to catch up to that. So that's kind of one of my thoughts on why we have, you know, Plot Hunter and, or Thick Plot and Thicker Plot around the same player base without really diluting it and throwing in level 70 accounts and things like that. Obviously, eventually, they will all be 70. And they'll all be, you know, kind of filler guilds. Guilds to help push and grow the community in general. And that's, that's one thing I really like about what we're doing here is we've got this guild community of people sure we can only have 30 members in a guild but in theory we can have an infinite amount they just are in different guild halls so i want to say thank you all for watching the video i know this one isn't as exciting or maybe as in depth as maybe some of you wanted maybe you wanted me to take a fight i'm sorry i did this on stream and also this this war was just horrible and I also, if I'd have jumped in on one of my other guild accounts, there would have been, I was able to win one fight on, I think, Thicker Plot's guild on the GM account. But if I was to jump in on Thick Plot or my tutorial account, it, it would have been, the, you would have just seen losses anyway, which is fine. I would have showed the point, but I don't need to go in on those because those accounts will never actually grow. They're, they're eventually going to be pulled out and somebody's going to be the GMs of those guilds. So... Thank you guys again for watching. I know this one kind of dragged on a little bit longer than it probably should have. 
but I wanted to get this out here. I wanted to help you out, especially the newer players that are starting to now progress a little bit further. They're jumping into the intermediate side of the game. Wanted to get some things cleared up to get you guys on the right path so that you can really start thriving inside Guild Wars. Because it's something I'm excited about. I love the Guild War system. I think it's great. I don't like this. But that's the whole other side tangent and just rage. But it's still, I enjoy it. I can't wait to grow. I can't wait to push. I can't wait to have an account to where... I can have some really fun fights and see what other people's defenses end up doing and really challenging. I, I think it's a great, cool, interesting concept. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.